In the previous video, you have learned that to define correctly or more exclusively Newton's second law, we, instead of using F equal to MA, which is a special case, okay, we use F is proportional. The resultant force is proportional to rate of change of momentum. And then we look at a special case study where mass is constant. That will be the first case. And it's from that case that we uh, define one Newton. And from that definition of one Newton, we can write the equation F is equal to MA. All right. Uh. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you use F equal to MA only when the mass is constant. And we did two examples in the previous video. So in this video, I am going to continue with the second case law. So think logic. Uh. We take turns. If mass is constant, then what's the second case? Second case here would be velocity constant. Hmm. It's got example like that. Go, 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 go. Imagine an uh, escalator. You know, escalator, the one that you used to stand on when you go to shopping before COVID-19. <laughs> okay, you know, like, escalator. Okay, so whenever someone steps on the escalator, you don't want the escalator to slow down. When someone steps off the escalator, you also don't want the escalator to speed up, right? So you kind of like want the escalator to move at the same speed or conveyor belts, all right? So V constant. There are a lot of other examples that we will look through later in this video. But let's look at the mathematical treatment first. Since I now know K is equal to 1 from the new definition of Newton's law, so I'm going to rewrite this a bit. F is now equal to D rate of change of MV. Okay, so if V is constant, uh, I am going to maybe remove the V and put outside. Okay. So think about this as uh, two variables. You have M, you have V. We take turns. Previously, M was constant. I put M outside. Now V is constant. I put V outside. Okay. And what I have now here is the M over DT. Okay. But because you are doing AS level physics, not university physics, we are going to assume that you just need to take the average change in mass. So most of the time, if the rate of change is constant, or rather we normally treat dm over dt as constant. So this v is actually normally change in mass over the change in time. Okay, Delta here is just a convenient symbol for me to write change. All right, so you have this one. These are all resultant or net force. So if you are the type where you get that you left out one of those forces, then you can write a sigma in front to show the resultant for both cases resultant. Okay, so V constant, we will then take out V and then understand that the mass will change. But how does this look like? Let us look at an example. Let's look at this example. We can find this in page 17 in your handout. It's also from Winter 14, paper 1-1. One, one. Let's read the question. Water is pumped through a hose pipe, okay, at the rate of 90 kg per minute. Okay, I'm going to draw this a bit. So we have a hose, okay, and then we have water coming out of this hose, okay, at a rate of uh, 90 kg per minute. So you have water flowing out more. 90 kg every minute okay, or every 60 seconds. It emerges from the hose pipe horizontally with a speed. So the speed of the water is 20 meter per second. Okay, so what will happen when water shoots up of a hose? If you have a hose at home, later in the evening, you go and help your parents water the flower, the garden. You try and see, you turn, you put your hose on the floor and you turn it on the floor hose will actually fall backwards. So in other words, the hose will actually wiggle around and actually begin to move backwards because there is a force of water on the hose. You will see the hose being pushed backwards. But if you find it hard to realize, to visualize, I have a clip for you. Okay, behind me is a very grainy recording, but very funny one, probably a CCTV. Or some firemen uh, about to spray water. Maybe there's a fire in front of this off-camera off that you cannot see. So you look at the firemen, huh? 
they actually lie on top of the fire hose. So they're lying on top of the fire hose because, well, just watch lah. Okay. Oh no, this is a training session. Okay, so they lie on top of the fire hose. And when the water come turn on, you can see the <laughs> the hose begins to wriggle around. If it's too slippery and there's not enough friction between the hose when he pressed down, when the fire fireman pressed down, and also the road. Yeah. So generally speaking, when you turn on the hose, the hose will actually recoil and push you backwards. GG. All right. So let's calculate the force for this particular hose. Okay. So this hose, there's a force of water on the hose. That's why the hose flings backward and also carries the fireman with them. Okay. So this force of water on the hose is experienced by the person holding the hose. But why is there this force? Well, because... Uh, although we haven't formally encountered Newton's third law yet, here's a good precursor to Newton's third law. There's also a force of hose on the water, pushing the water forward. Okay, so I can find the force of hose on water. This one, let's say I call this uh, FW for F on water. This is actually equal to change of momentum who is the force acting on change of momentum of water divided by time so we are using actually uh, dp dt okay but this is dp dt for water all right, so I'm being very like particular about reminding you or telling you that this is for the water because if not right, then there's always a confusion or there's like that misunderstanding between the force on the hose and the force on the water. So what I know is that from Newton's third law, these two forces are action-reaction pair. So because of this, they have equal magnitude. Meaning, if I can find how much force is being applied on the water to push it out of the hose, I can find there will be the same amount of force it is required to hold the hose to prevent it from moving backwards. All right. So I'm taking the change in momentum of the water. So good news here is momentum is mv. Okay, I'll write here for the people who need it. Okay, so you cannot use ma here because your mass keep changing. Your mass is changing at 90 kg per minute. Ha, there's a lot of mass change, okay? So right now, I'm going to take out the M. Sorry, not take out the M. Take out the V. Velocity is constant, okay? The speed of this much. Okay, and right now I have here is the M over dt. This is your force law. Force on the water. Okay, so velocity or the speed of the water is 20. And the change in mass is 90 kg for every minute. So one minute is 60 seconds. Okay, so the amount of force I need is not that much, actually. If I press my friend, Casio, the calculator, it ends up being 30 Newton. So you imagine the fireman hose. Wow, that one is lots of water per unit time. Okay, so this is how you apply this. It's not really that complicated. The whole idea here is you take out what is constant and then you look at how much water changes per unit time. So this uh, entire bracket here shows us your 90 kg per minute. Okay, pretty straightforward. Just so you know, these two are equal magnitude. So we are actually looking for the force on the water. But Newton's third law says that the force on the water will be equal to the force of the water on the hose is equal to the force of the hose on the water. Okay, so because they are both equal, then this hose will get pushed backwards. You need to counteract that. You will apply, the human will apply the same amount of force. All right, that's it for this example. Let's look at the second one. This is on page 22, if you're looking at the handouts, or this is Summer 16, Paper 1-1. One, one. This diagram shows a man standing on a platform that is attached to a flexible pipe. It's always pipe one, most of the time, yes, okay? So the water is pumped 
through the pipe so that the man and the platform remains at constant height. So if it remains at constant height, right, it means that the forces will balance out. The man is not going to go anywhere. So if you are a bit confused about the forces, let me, let's continue reading the question first. The resultant vertical force on the platform is zero. Oh, they even tell you here. Resultant vertical force is zero. Wish. The combined mass of the man and the platform is 96 kg. Okay. Then the next part here is mass of the water is discharged vertically downwards. So the water is pushed down this way. So previously, in our previous example, the water was horizontal. Now it's vertical. Okay. Okay. And it is pushing out from the platform at 40 kg each second. Wow. That's a lot. So from here, you can immediately write dm dt is equal to 40 kg per second. Okay. So the question here is, what is, what is the speed? What is the speed of the water leaving the platform? So basically, we're just saying, what is the rule? Ah? Okay, so I guess step one. We got to try to see if you can understand the scenario first. All right, so the first thing we should do is to draw the forces acting on the man, just to see if we know what we are talking about here. So right now, there is a force. Okay, I'm going to replicate the platform here. This is platform. Then my friend here, is it still Bernardo? I don't know. Someone, my dude is still standing here. Okay. So what we have is the force on the water. So the water is flowing out this way. Okay. This water. So the water itself will experience a force on the water by the platform. The platform is pushing the water down. And because of this equal magnitude opposite direction, there's also a force on platform by the water. Mm. So they counterbalance each other. All right. So what are the other forces in play here? Obviously, if this is the case, right, the platform guy would will shoot upwards, but obviously it doesn't happen because it maintains at a constant height. So this is obviously because there is the weight of the person and the platform, mg. Okay, so the person and the platform's total mass, let me copy this here, is 96 kg. Okay, mass of this and the person, this one is 96 kg. So if I were to put it in here, this will be 96G. All right, so 96KG. Okay, I guess we could use Newton's second law. Cannot use F equal to MA, but we can use F is equal to DP DT. So what we are doing here is we will take P here as MV, but also it is the momentum change of water. Teacher, why you take water? Shouldn't it be the platform? Because the platform is not moving. The platform doesn't have a momentum change. See? Because the force on the platform will counterbalance with mg. This too is your action-reaction pair. The water pushed the platform up. The platform pushed the water down. Okay? So if I can find this force, I can find this force. Now. Okay? So these two are equal because of Newton's third law. Okay? But this two is equal because of Newton's first law. The platform is horizontal. I write here. La. Platform not moving. So the forces are balanced. So because of this, the upward force on the platform. So let's say I call this FP, F on platform will be equal to 96G. Newton's first law. Didn't change its state of motion. There is no resultant force. N1. 
Okay, so actually, I don't know how you form your understanding of Newton's law, but normally all three laws are happening at the same time. Like for example, here, we say that the, for the force experienced by the water is equal to the force experienced by the platform because of Newton's third law. Okay, so force of platform will be equal to force on water because of Newton's third law. Okay. But the force on the platform is equal to the weight of the platform and human because of Newton's first law. Platform not moving. So it will maintain its state of motion. There is no net force. Net force is zero. Forces are balanced. Okay. And finally, we are using Newton's second law here. Force is rate of change of momentum. Okay, because this Newton's second law we can apply on the water. Okay, platform is not moving, we can't apply Newton's second law on the platform. So right now I'm going to continue here. You can find the force on the water by looking at the a rate of change of momentum of the water. So I can take out my V because the water is flowing out at constant speed. And then I have now the MDT. Okay. So I can now go back to the question and find what is the speed of the water, which is what we want to find V. Okay, and the flow rate is 40 kg per second. Okay, let me put that in. We are looking for V. And the flow rate is 40 kg per second. All right, so what I have now is F is equal to 40. But I cannot solve this question yet because I need to use the second equation. Also, right here, the force on the water, okay, maybe I should continue here. In the decision, because there's no space. All right. So this is force on the water. This is 40 V. Okay. And what is force on the platform? Force on the platform is 96g okay so once again uh, this force of the water is equal to the force on the platform because the platform is in uh, equ equilibrium okay sorry force on the platform is equal to the weight because it's in equilibrium so many things are equal here lah. actually all three of these arrows are equal in magnitude okay the black one is equal newton's third law the black and red is equal because Newton's first law. Balance forces. All right, that's the idea. Make sure you don't simply equate left and right because huh? situations can change and you may get confused. So finally, I can find V here. This will be 40. Wait, 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 96 times 9.81 divided by 40. Okay. Ninety six times nine point eight one divided by forty. Okay, so this velocity of the water is twenty three point five meter per second. Okay, so many things are happening here at the same time. When I read the scenario, I know that water is being pushed out. So because water is being pushed out, the platform will be being pushed up. Water pushed down, platform pushed up. Okay. The second thing that I know now is. Because the platform is not moving, so the force on the platform is equal to the weight of the platform. So they balance out. These two are in equilibrium. So that's why I can say these three arrows have the same magnitude. But the only magnitude that I can actually find is force on the water. Because the water is the only one that has change in momentum. Change in momentum is the only way that we can calculate the force. All right. So we will calculate the force on the water first. So force on the water can be written in the expression of 40V. And then I will equate the 40V to 96G to find the value of V. All right. That's it for this example. Go ahead and give it a think. Make sure you know why you write them as equal and don't simply simply equal because those statement questions all may trouble you a bit when you do paper one. Okay. So that's it for this example and also this video. Go and try some question involving the changing mass because I'm sure you haven't seen examples like this before. All right. And the answer is 23.5 or 24. I'll see you in the next example video or lecture video or next video that you watch. Bye.